guys left a lot of points on the board with the three minutes field goals. You guys also kind of I mean, characteristically missed the crumb ring with a lot of um, penalties. I'm wondering, was that a source of frustration for you? And what message did you give your team to get them back on track? Well, first of all, uh, we're talking to the team. We're celebrating the win. Uh, great win for our team. I thought there was a lot of things we did really well. Obviously, we left nine points. You know, off the, the scoreboard, you got to put those points on the board. Points on the board really matter. So uh, we'll give, uh, we'll, we'll have a little kicking competition this week and it'll be an opportunity uh, for Ryan Tice. And um, yeah, see if we can't make him next time. Stay on the left hand side here, Larry. Coach, can you talk about your perspective of Jordan Lewis's interception and have you ever seen anything quite like that? Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've seen Odell Beckham Jr. do that. Uh, it looked like that kind of play. You know, I really, uh, the most impressive thing about it was, you know, he jumped a little early, and I was a little nervous that, uh, that he was going to come down and the ball was going to just go over his fingertips. But he was able to hang in the air and uh, made a spectacular play. You know, then I was thinking, well, it's fourth down. It'd probably been better. And he's not intercepted it. But I'm really glad he did because it was a spectacular, spectacular uh, football play and athletic uh, play. Uh, and really, really unbelievable. I thought Channing Stribling, uh, you know, did a great job as well. And Jordan had a tremendous tackle in the open field. I thought our secondary was was really good. Our, our, our defensive line was lights out. It was. Uh, it was a game ball for Don Brown, uh, kind of a game. Very, very impressed with our uh, defense, with our defensive coaches, and with the character of our, our defensive players and their talent. A plus plus. In the middle, Bill. Coach, right here. Um, first off, what was your vantage point of uh, Wilton's downfield throw for the touchdown? I mean, it was right on the money. And um, are you itching to get this team, you know, a, a good road test next week? Yeah, it was a. Uh, we were under center, play action pass. Uh, we were really, really. The play's designed to go to Jake Butt, but uh, you know, then I saw Wilton wheel and throw it to uh, to Amara, and saw Amara had a had a step on him or two, and uh, you know, just kind of holding your breath there the last last split seconds of the play to see that it doesn't get deflected, but. I really felt good when the ball was in the air. Uh, Wilton has been extremely good throwing the deep ball, uh, extremely accurate throwing the deep ball. So uh, we all have a lot of confidence, and he has a lot of confidence in throwing it, and uh, it was a tremendous play. The slant, a couple plays before that, also to Amara, was, uh, was another excellent throw. And we, didn't give, we didn't give Wilton the pass protection today that that uh, we would like and he deserves, um, but he uh, when he had when he had protection and, and was able to set his feet and, and throw the football, I thought he did it. He was very effective. In the middle, Chris. A couple of things, Coach Grant Newsom and Quinn Lorneen. Is is, are, is Quinn banged up? Yeah, Quinn's working through something. Okay. And then Grant, any word on him? Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look good. Uh, he was he was blocking on the edge and. Uh, you know what he told me was you know, he got he got uh, cut right at his knee. I don't know if it was a helmet or, or what it was, but uh, yeah, he's going to. I think there'll be a, a surgical procedure if he needed. And then can you talk about the job you guys did slowing their run game and how critical that was? Yeah, we we did a tremendous job uh, against the run. I thought we did uh, a great job against the pass. Pass rush was outstanding. You know, our our, our defensive backs. We're in tight coverage all day. I mean, they tested us short, deep, crossing routes, uh, you know, the works. And uh, you know, our, guys, our guys stood up to it. Brian here, Mark. The, the timing calling for the deep ball on that drive versus, you know, another point. What, what goes into that decision to, to take that shot at that point? I mean, is that something you've been thinking about? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a play action, uh, you know, pass where we're faking. We're faking in the middle and uh, really trying to pull a linebacker and hit Jake, but in the seam over the linebackers, uh, they've been they've been hitting the gaps and 
and uh, had been had been timing up blitzes and doing a really good job with it. And that we're, that's what we're trying to do: play action pass and hit Jake over the linebackers. Uh, and that's why I said that's that was the intent. But he's got the ability versus single coverage to to wheel and throw it deep to Amar, which he did. Glad he did. Directly in front, John. You'd probably rather not be, but is there a benefit to this team to being in a fourth quarter game like this was at this point in the season? <laughs> They're all fourth quarter games, <laughs> as far as I know. Uh, but it was a real, real football game, uh, you know, like like we we thought they've all been, you know. Uh, and our team uh, prevailed. Very proud of them for that. And we'll move on with humble hearts and get ready for Rutgers. The other thing is, where, where did the uh, eleven men lined up behind each other come from? <laughs> um, just something, uh, something my son Jay f found and came up with, and uh, so you can talk to him about it. But thought it was, uh, thought it was good. You guys had fun with it this week, and uh, we put it in this week, and, and they executed it well. In the middle right, Bill. Um, Coach, how do you kind of not calm expectations, but just kind of keep the team within its, you know, own? The not get too excited with what you've accomplished so far. Well, we're just going to keep uh, keep going about this. I mean, we'll ce we'll celebrate a win. Uh, we'll celebrate all wins, but then we'll get uh, ready for a championship game for a big game against Rutgers. Uh, we're going about this treating every game like it's a big game, every game like it's a championship game, and you know, I think that's um, just found when you do that and and you treat. Uh, you know, treat the, every game like it's you know, like the play that could decide the game. Play the first quarter like it's the fourth quarter. Uh, play the fourth quarter like it's the last two minutes. When you get in those pressure situations, uh, it's what you do all the time. It's, uh, it's how you always approach it. So uh, we'll get ready for this game like it's a championship game. Coach on your left here, Adam. Right here, Jim. Uh, Will Willen continues to to show the ability to evade defenders, mobile in the pocket, but it seems like he has a tendency sometimes to force a throw rather than maybe just throw the ball away. He's, he's trying to make a play, um, which could have been you know, intercepted a couple of times. How do you remedy that? How, how do you sit down with him and, and go over that? Is that something that you've talked to him about? I thought his decisions today were good. Uh, you know, there really anything that was close to, to be intercepted, uh, I thought that I thought I thought he threw a really accurate ball. I mean, in a in a, in a very normal safe place, uh, low below the waist uh, to Jake Bidis, he would have been uh, going to the ground. Uh, I thought it was a really well placed ball. Now they made a really good play. Uh, got a hand in there, tipped it, and it, it uh, tipped right to to one of their uh, defensive backs, and there was an interception. The other one, he, he threw to the end zone, jump ball situation. I think it was. Jay, you or Amara, and uh, you know, outside of that, I can't think of another ball that he that he forced all day. One, you know, one other decision he could have made. Uh, he took a sack in the third quarter where he could have thrown the ball out of bounds, and that backed us up, and we eventually missed, we missed that field goal, the, the last one. But those are uh, those were the three decisions I thought. Um, you know, I thought they were all good except. Except the, you know the one he could have thrown, thrown out of bounds and not taken the, the sack. But he's making good decisions. Uh, you know, I don't know how many decisions that is in a game, but you know, make make one one bad one. Uh, probably in the ninety high nineties percentage wise, that'd be mid A on most tests. Uh, I thought he did. I thought he quit himself well. I think that's a strength. That he's making good decisions. Coach, in the middle right, Chris, um, the old cliche is that you've had some championships. What is uh, this type of performance today? Uh, do you feel confidence moving forward that this is the type of unit that can win you multiple championships that you're talking about? Yeah, um, I've heard that too, and I, I believe that to a certain extent. I mean, you got to you got to win. you got to win at least two out of three of the phases, offense, defense, um, and special teams. I don't know if we, how many, I know we won the game, and I know we, uh, I know where we can make improvements, you know, offensively with our, our pass protection can be better, uh, you know, 
know, field goals. You got to win to win championships. You got to make field goals too. So, uh, you know, we can we can we can improve there. Um, but yeah, defensively, again, I would say A plus plus. No question about it that uh, defense was our was a shining star today. That was that phase of of our team was was outstanding. Awesome with a capital A. Coach, over to your left here, Bob. Jim, this game was was tighter and maybe not as pretty as some of the earlier victories where you, where you guys blew teams out. But for kind of an old fashioned Big Ten slugfest type of game, do you appreciate it more? Even I appreciate those. Appreciate and celebrate all wins, uh, and I appreciate the style of football today. Uh, no question about it. I mean, it's a good style of football. It's a, been a winning style of football for us through five games, and it's been a winning style of football for Wisconsin. Both teams were, were undefeated today, and it was, uh, it was a good ball game. Middle left here, Nick. Jim, over here. I think uh, last year through like five games, something like that, you mentioned how you thought the team was getting into its battle rhythm, I think was the word you used. Is it, do you feel like that's coming out? I know you guys have had some injuries to go through, but do you guys feel like you're getting into your rhythm here five games in? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, we just, we don't look at arriving at a rhythm or getting into a rhythm. You know, we're just, we're just trying to get better every day. We're trying to be better today than we were yesterday and be better tomorrow than we were today. And uh, I think that, there's definitely things we got we got better at today, and and uh, other things that, that we can get better at. So uh, you know we'll just keep keep striving for that. So simple that it just might work. Um, get back to work with humble hearts and uh, go eat some ice cream right now and <laughs> celebrate for a little bit, and then get ready for Rutgers. Got ice cream again? Huh? Got ice cream again? <laughs> whatever, whatever ice cream yeah. is over, I like the chocolate kind. <laughs> so, yeah, I like that. Here, I like to get together after after the game with the team. <clears throat> a little ice cream. A couple of weeks ago, you cited the snap and hold. Is is Kenny? Is this the situation more yips now with Kenny? <laughs> I don't know about that word. I. Uh, I got Ryder Cup in my brain. Yeah. The, the golf, the football analogy. Uh, we'll look at it this week and uh, and look to see who the who the absolute you know best person is to kick field goals for us. Uh, you know, it's possible. It's, it's, we've never thought it was ideal to, you know, have Kenny do the punting, the kickoffs, and the, the field goals. It's, it's a lot. It's probably too much. Uh, and this will be an opportunity for Ryan Tice to step up this week and, and um, you know, carry that, carry that duty. I think he's more than capable of doing it. Uh, thought that kick he made, I thought it was good from where I was standing. Um, so that's he'll get the he'll get that opportunity this week to prove that he can he can do that. And I, I'm confident that he will, and I think it'd probably be better and for our overall kicking game to to have somebody that can do one of those phases. Also, what is does that formation have a, a name? And and when you threw it at your defense this week, were they confused by it when they first saw it? Uh, a little bit trained. It's, Train formation, yeah. Got That's time. the name of it. Okay. We'll get a couple more. Maybe it has a future. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll start with, on the right with Steve. Jim, uh, Channing Stripling had the two interceptions. Also had a big pass breakup in between those interceptions. Talk about those plays that he made for you. Big plays, big plays. You know, I wish we would have cap. You know, got more points on the board off of the turnovers. We had the we had the three turnovers. Uh, to, to their one, you know, they they did a better job a lot capitalizing off the, the turnovers than in terms of putting points on the board than we did. But uh, you know, big, big plays uh, were made. Uh, you know, to stop their stop drive. You know, their winning drive, their attempt at a winning drive at the end of the game with Channing's interception, Jordan's interception. Uh, and I thought he had. I thought Channing had two other or another. Really big pass break. I think of two right now that were were outstanding. As he, they were testing him deep, uh, I think he got his hands on four or five balls during the game, uh, you know, which is which is outstanding. And two interceptions. That's that's outstanding for for a corner. And he tackled. Uh, I thought he had a heck of a ball game as well. 
Both our corners really played well today. All right, last question, Mark. It's unusual for your team to draw a lot of penalties, but today it seemed like they just kept coming, especially yeah. in critical situations. Do you think there was some something connected with them? I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I, I, there. Uh, you know, we talked to our team a lot about uh, when we were in the punt formation. You know that they were. And when they were on defense, they make they make a shift call, and they say set, they try to simulate the, the cadence offensively or the or the punt cadence, and and, and I was hearing it. Uh, you know, the, the officials were, you know, we talked to them about it before the game. I thought they would have heard it too, and um, you know, they're allowed to say move, but they can't simulate the, the set or the or the cadence. Uh, so yeah, that was I thought that was. Was uh, you know caused those two penalties very much caused those two penalties, and uh, and then the last one they, we got called for holding. Sanusi got called through I, again. I thought that was another running over the running over the snapper. I thought that should have been called again. They were they were trying to run right over the snapper, which they, they got penalized for earlier in the ball game, and I didn't see the hold by Scott. I saw him get run over, which really should have been. Thought a penalty on, on their side, but uh, we got uh, we had formation penalties. Uh, they called us for the offensive tackle being in, being off the line when Juwan went into the game, and we got that that fixed. But uh, and there was a few other penalties that that uh, we'll look at and address as well. And uh, don't want to be don't want to don't want to be penalized.